All right, guys, welcome back to Algebra 3. Um, these two particular exercises, 66 and 68, we are asked to determine between lines 1 and line 2 if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Those are our three options. Same with number 68. So let's look at line 1 and line 2 in exercise 66. We're examining the slope of the lines. Nothing else matters. So we're looking for the slope. The slope is the m, which appears in front of the x, is the coefficient to the linear term. These two values are exactly the same. Matter of fact, they are both 4 over an understood 1. When the lines have the same slope, the lines are said to be parallel. Okay? Number 68, we're going to examine the slopes again. This is a negative 4 fifths. And then note... The sign has changed between line 1 and line 2. One is negative and one is positive. That's a good sign that they're going to be perpendicular. The other uh, case or portion that you need for them to be perpendicular is not only do the signs have to be different, but the ratios have to be flipped. And so this is 4 fifths, this is 5 fourths. Therefore, these two lines are said to be perpendicular. If you were to examine slopes such as 4 over 3, and if you were looking at a negative 4 over 3, this would be a um, scenario for neither. Although they are positive and negative, that's one part of what you need, they are not reciprocals of the other, so this would be a neither scenario. All right, move our camera down, catch number 70. You're given uh, points for two different lines. Now we could sketch these and try and figure out if they are indeed um, parallel or perpendicular or neither. I think I'm just going to do the slope formulas for both. Uh, so line one, this is uh, point one, so we'll call this first value x sub one, y sub one, x sub two, and y sub two. Same for line two. All right, so for the first one, uh, remember slope. Slope is change in y over change in x. Please do not put the x's on top, okay? So slope is going to be 5 minus a negative 1 over 1 minus a negative 2. So I get, what, 6 on top and 3 on bottom, which is 2, or 2 over an understood 1. Now I'm going to do the second line. We'll do it in blue. Uh, this is the slope of the first one. Slope of the second line. Negative 5 minus 3 over 5 minus 1. So I get a negative 8 over positive 4. I think we'll go ahead and, and reduce that. Uh, get what? Negative 2 over 1. And although the signs are different, one's negative and one's positive, for them to be perpendicular, one of these would need to be uh, turned upside down. So this case is a neither scenario. This is neither perpendicular or parallel. Means, it means that the two lines are going to intersect at some, some point. All right, last but not least, these problems are going to be the ones that are going to probably require the most work. We're asked to find a line that is parallel to this one that will pass through this point. We're also asked to find a line that is parallel to this line that is going to pass through this point. So the first thing I'm going to do is take our original line, uh, let's call it step one, and I'm going to put it into slope intercept because I'm interested in the slope of the line. That's what's going to determine parallel and perpendicular. So in slope intercept, it is y equals a negative x plus 7. When the x comes to the other side, it's negative. I want the fraction that is in front of the, or between the negative sign and the x. So that is a y is a negative 1 x plus 7. And actually, we're going to make it fractional and make it a negative 1 over 1. So our line that's going to be parallel, for the parallel scenario, it's going to have the exact same slope. 
So we're looking at a line that is y equals a negative 1x plus b. It is not going to be the 7 anymore. We need a new value for b. I do have an x and y to plug in. So we're going to take this value and plug it in to x and y and see if we can come up with an equation. So for y, I'm going to plug in 2 equals a negative 1x or a negative, and then we'll put in negative 3 for x, and so that was 2 for y, so negative 3 comma 2, and then plus b, and we're going to figure out what b is. 2 equals a positive 3 plus, plus b. When we subtract 3 from both sides, b should be equal to negative 1, okay, in the case where it is parallel. Therefore, for parallel, for the parallel scenario, our line that's going to be parallel is y equals our original slope for the line that was parallel was a negative 1, x, and then our b for the parallel line is negative 1. Now we're asked to do the same thing for perpendicular, okay? Perpendicular. That means the slope is going to have to be turned upside down, so it is 1 over a negative 1, and then the sign has to change. So the sign is going to be positive 1, okay? So this is going to be the line that's going to be perpendicular. So y equals positive. 1x plus b. It's got to go through the exact same point. So we're going to plug in 2 for x again, or excuse me, 2 for y equals a positive 1 times a negative 3 for x plus b. I get a 2 equals a negative 3 plus b. And when I add 3 to both sides, I get 5 equals b. Therefore, y equals, my new slope is positive 1 this time, positive 1, then x plus 5. This is a line that is parallel, excuse me, perpendicular to our original line. This is a line that's going to be parallel to our original line. Uh, these are great ACT questions, great standardized questions. All right, blessings, guys.